Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition top stories. St. Lucia has received high marks from CDMA for achievements in the Model Safe School program. The National Apprenticeship Program has set some 40 young persons on a career path. This week, the year-long celebration of the island's 40th anniversary of independence takes on new meaning. All that plus the latest in youth development and sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. St. Lucia has received high marks from the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CDEMA, the implementing agency for the Model Safe School program in the Caribbean. CDEMA has commended the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development for leading the charge among the beneficiary countries. St. Lucia, following the commencement of consultations, is now finalizing the National Safe School Policy. The National Safe School Policy will facilitate the amendment of existing legislation to integrate disaster risk reduction and environmental protection measures for schools in the implementing countries. The first stage of the policy consultations was designed to garner stakeholder participation and consensus building within the national context. Now, in its second phase, key policy expert and consultant on the Safe Schools Policy, Dr. Winston McCalla, said the aim is to validate the document. The country that really has led the way is in this area, St. Lucia. So what we are doing is finalizing what a document called a Safety Schools Policy for St. Lucia. Uh, this is our second visit. We were here in May for about a week, um, had extensive consultations throughout the country and some team members visited a number of schools and out of that an initial discussion with the ministry the document was prepared so what we are doing today is validating the document finding out if any changes are needed making the changes resubmitting the document uh, that document will go to the ministry of education and hopefully will go from the ministry to cabinet for approval the goal of the Model Safe School program for CDMA participating states is to create safe, secure, protective and green educational institutions from pre-primary to tertiary levels, including public and private institutions for the development of simple, applicable and adaptable tools. Project coordinator for the implementation of the Model Safe School program in the Caribbean, Kerry Ann Thompson, highlighted the importance of the policy. This declaration points to a roadmap for school safety, a regional roadmap for school safety, which bears three pillars. Um, one speaks to um, school disaster management, one speaks to um, the basically the mainstreaming of safe schools in the education curriculum, and one speaks to the institutional framework. And essentially, the policy will basically be the vehicle for the advancement of the different um, aspects of the pillars of school safety. So, for example, as you mentioned, the integration of resilience concepts and safe school concepts within the curriculum is an, it's an, a very important imperative and that will be reflected in the policy. The implementation of the Model Safe School Program in the Caribbean MSSP project was designed to, among other things, enhance the capacity of the six target CARICOM states to incorporate and mainstream comprehensive risk and disaster management considerations into education sector policies, planning and operations. The policy document provides the legal means by which the school safety program will be put into force. Ministry of Education School Safety Coordinator Bernays Kodra said that the project has been high on the ministry's priority. So school safety has been on the priority list for the Department of Education. We look at school safety holistically as we've said before and uh, for us at the department this second round of consultations is critical because we are looking at a multi-sectorial um, perspective as it relates to this school safety policy. As we move forward, school safety is not just going to be a Ministry of Education, but it will be all of St. Lucia. 
Technical support for the consultations is being provided by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CDIMA, through Environmental Solutions Limited in Jamaica under the MSSP project in the Caribbean. The CDIMA coordinating unit has received grant funding from the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, to the amount of Euro $746,000 to implement the program toolkit in St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The National Apprenticeship Program has set some 40 young persons on a career path. They are now better equipped for employment in the tourism hospitality sector, having been trained and graduated from Monroe College. More from Anisia Antoine. A cohort of students have graduated from the hospitality training course through the National Apprenticeship Program at the Monroe College in View Fort. The three-month program is part of an initiative by the government of St. Lucia to help alleviate the high unemployment rate amongst our youth, especially in the south of the island. Dr. Wendy Moncherry, director of the National Apprenticeship Program, congratulated all students on the successful completion of the training course and wished them the best in their future endeavors. The economic environment in St. Lucia is influenced by forces both internal and external. And so we believe the best way to prepare you is by giving you knowledge and experience that will prepare you to effectively function in the wider communities. I want to remind you, those who are graduating, that this is just the beginning of a new path for some of you and the extension of an existing path for others. Cabinet Secretary and keynote speaker Benjamin Emmanuel encouraged students to take control of their destiny. Gotten here through the partnership of Monroe College and NAP are among the tools that you require in order for you to succeed. But it is you who will determine how that training, the skill and the opportunity that you've been given helps you to achieve your goal and your destiny. Graduate speaker Deborah Cooper expressed gratitude to the professors on behalf of the graduating class for their guidance and counseling. My journey at Monroe College has been quite a learning experience. It's been a life changing. The friendships and relationships I have fostered here at Monroe made this a comfortable environment to grow and transform. I have acquired skills and become empowered with knowledge that will prepare me for the future endeavors. Though it was not without challenges, but being in the front office class taught me how to be professional. The graduation ceremony took place on Thursday, September 26, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. On Thursday, 3rd October, the year-long celebration of the island's 40th anniversary of independence takes on new meaning with the unveiling of the all-in sculpture at the Castries Waterfront Roundabout. Internationally renowned sculptor Jalim Yudovic was commissioned to artistically capture the essence of St. Lucia. He recently sat down with the GIS's Geraldine Bissett Joseph to discuss the piece. It speaks to our united stride mm -hmm. into the future. Mm -hmm and you know where where we projecting ourselves you know our, our country has given so much to the world right we've given the world literature mm -hmm. we've uh, given the world e um, economic philosophy mm -hmm. we've given the world arts we've given the world we, we have so much to be proud of mm -hmm. we have so much stalwarts that has emanated from this small dot right you know, and I often say Senator is like an atom. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's small, but it's powerful. If you split that atom, then you have, you know, something explosive. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I really believe that this sculpture encapsulates all that. Jalim Yudovic sculptures have been displayed at museums worldwide. In recent years, he has worked extensively in China. He says being asked to produce a sculpture for the island's 40th independence celebration was an honor. So when the opportunity came, mm -hmm. it's something that I received with much um, elation, right. but, but also um, with a great degree of, 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 
of reverence and, mm. and, 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 you know, and seriousness, I would say. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. to find a better word. Uh, okay. For lack of a better word, uh, seriousness, because this mm -hmm. is this is epic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our our people need those because all the developed world, you have these iconic things, these, yeah. uh, these iconic statues. Very true. You know that that break the um, you know monotony mm -hmm. of the daily lives. Mm -hmm. That that give inspiration. That serves as beacons for inspiration, mm -hmm. and also sort of um, of, of a mapping. Mm -hmm of a map of, 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 of who you are and, and where you are and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And people need these things. And yeah. all societies need these things to, to grow. This is very essential to our growth. Mm -hmm. The unveiling takes place Thursday at 3.30 p.m. The event will be broadcast live on the National Television Network, NTN, and streamed. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, SLBS, is spearheading a series of activities in commemoration of World Standards Day, which is observed annually on October 14. World Standards Day this year is being observed under the theme, Video Standards Create a Global Stage, a reference to how standards have been critical to developments in video technology that have expanded opportunities for advances in medicine, entertainment, and social interactions between people wherever they are in the world. In St. Lucia, the observance will focus on the importance of standards in various sectors of the economy, including beauty and wellness, construction, agriculture, and the environment. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards will launch its activities on Thursday, 3rd October at 10 a.m. at its headquarters in BZ. This is NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. When a hurricane is approaching, safety of life and the preservation of livelihoods is most important. We should take heed. Create proper drainage along the contour of your farm. Harvest and store all crops that could be harvested. And if possible to sell any produce, do so. Reinforce farmhouses by using screws or hurricane ties to secure the roof and ensure that it is boarded up. Remove all plastic covers from greenhouses and store properly in your reinforced farmhouse. Secure all official agriculture and farming business documents and policies in sealed plastic coverings. And perhaps consider taking out a crop insurance policy to secure your agro livelihood. Take all possible precaution ahead of a hurricane or tropical storm. This is the hurricane season and we should be prepared. A message brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome everyone to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Athletics coach in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Cuthbert Modest, recently facilitated a one-day workshop for District 3 primary school's physical education teachers ahead of school's athletics competition. More in this report. More emphasis is being placed on honing the sporting skill of primary school students on Ireland. On Friday, an athletics workshop for District 3 primary school physical education teachers was held. The engagement took the form of theoretical and practical sessions on how to make athletics more appealing to the students while using fundamental training techniques for future star athletes. Facilitating the workshop was ministry coach Cuthbert Modest. He says what is most important at the primary school level is nurturing the children's sporting development. Well, the objective, like you know, is sprints, between sprint runs, right? So I give them some drills and some games. So when they go back to the school now, I mean, they'll make the, the running fun. Once you make it fun, you'll get kids coming out to play, right? But if you make them too hard, they'll run away. And the emphasis is not on winning. And objective is developing the athlete. So by the time they reach secondary school, all right, they'll put what the action, whatever they learn into the sport right now. PE teachers who participated in Friday's sessions appreciated the training exercises. Well, this session is a timely one because um, most of the schools around the island are preparing for their 
annual district um, and inter-district athletics meet. So it's a timely workshop in that it allows us to teach the students the correct procedures in terms of um, sprinting and you know how they use the lanes designated so that they can run. This is like a refresher for me. We haven't had a track and field workshop in a while. So Mr. Tawatini coming out and doing this with us uh, is a great initiative. One thing that uh, has stuck with me is uh, the starting position for a sprint. Um, uh, the knowledge I had before coming in today, I found that it was wrong. So now that I've learned the correct technique, I can go back to my school and teach the girls the right thing to do. A lot of information and a lot of strategy and a lot of eye, eye openers. Um, certain things that we, certain practices that we were engaging in, which were not adequate for the students, we were able to augment them and we were able to have a wider knowledge of, of activities, drills, and stuff that we can do so that we can enable our students to be better athletes. So we learned a lot about athletics in the morning, more about nutrition, what needs to be taught to the children, how do they engage in the track activity okay it's helped because we teach special education i teach special education and i can apply a lot of what i have learned today in the classroom and for sports coach modest is confident that such training sessions for pe teachers will make for overall improved performance of budding athletes and sporting seasons over time training not so good that's why i, I train to help them out because when i come i see some train doing some stats run wrong position, they make them try and run too many races and they just come and maybe a week or two weeks before the sports, they make them try and run, 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 run. No, it doesn't work so. It, it, it's like you know, a build up, you know, build their strength first, their confidence and then show, show them how to run. But sporting is a must in the primary school. Okay? So from there now, you know you have a core of children you're watching. Because most children, all right, most children, Let's come to secondary school and you cannot do nothing, 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 okay? So if one staff athletes, start from young, from a primary school. Friday's athletic workshop for District 3 primary school PE teachers was held at the Mindu Phillip Park. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I am Jesse Leons reporting. Cricket West Indies Vice President Kishon Shallow is impressed by what he saw following a visit to the St. Lucia Sports Academy in Gozile. Mr. Shallow was part of a delegation from Cricket West Indies that visited the facility with Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney. Excellent, excellent initiative. I think this is definitely a model for the rest of the Caribbean. I, I, I see it as a similar model to a campus, a sports campus that I saw in Ireland earlier this year which I think is fantastic so to have the different sports and disciplines coming together giving children the opportunity to, to, to play sport while you know continuing their studies it's phenomenal and I think it's an excellent excellent initiative. The St. Lucia Sports Academy was conceptualized to facilitate the merging of sporting and academic excellence among outstanding young St. Lucian sports personalities. That's your update for today. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Bank of St. Lucia recently partnered with a local author to host its 11th annual Back to School Student Success Workshop for scholarship recipients. The workshop, which forms part of the bank's overall scholarship program, was held at the Financial Center in Castries. There are many businesses belonging to both the private and the public sector who host scholarship programs for the children of their shareholders and staff. For many years, however, Bank of St. Lucia has been going a little further by hosting a full one-day workshop to better prepare its scholarship recipients for school, success and for life. This year's 11th annual Student Success Workshop was based on the theme Achieving Success Through Positive Relationships and covered several topics including self-esteem, conflict resolution and the importance of listening and body language among others. I'm very happy to be here today to host these students who are actually children of our staff members here at the bank. 
uh, it's very important to us to recognize their hard work and their achievements in the common entrance examination and some of them are also repeat participants of the program. We focus a lot on education and youth development as these two areas play such a major part of our corporate social responsibility program here at Bank of St. Lucia. Local author Valentine Dantes was first selected to facilitate the workshop based on the success of his educational book entitled Orientation Made Easy, What to Expect When Starting Secondary School. As a former teacher and employee of the bank, Dantes says that he is forever grateful to Bank of St. Lucia for giving him the opportunity to recognize and harness his talents. It has been a journey. It has been a very wonderful experience uh, meeting so many children and being able to impact them in so many different ways. Um, Bank of St. Lucia has been very um, supportive in terms of helping me grow my, um, my business, helping me grow this initiative, this workshop. Bank of St. Lucia's HR team oversees the program every year and have been pleased with the results so far based on feedback from both parents and students. BOSL is very grateful to its shareholders and employees for its success and the annual Student Success Workshop is one of the many ways the bank gives back to them, the youth and education. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Novel Aquayol. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt the sting to my right leg. And when I look back, I knew it was a, a, a full of snake. You happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake. This is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours, you will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we come in for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Madame, Department of Responsibility, with Formation of Government CLC, GIS, Assemble Pi Television National, via NTN, Capacito Nouvelle Aquayol, Quesito Primus Hutchinson. Priski Kat Milmoun to the Assistance Medical, the Wantan Manoir Medical Hot Lamerik, the Assetlisi, Portuguese Service Medical, Sampayma, Moun to the Treatment, Pouzie, Dan, Presha, Pisado, Pouzafan, Etouffman, Maladie, Tche, Apami, Pouzielot. Si Officier Medical, Tenu Opoasio, Ancet Culturel, à l'Hôpital Owen King, et à Bobatoa aussi. Manoir Medical, a commencé Portuguese Service le 26 septembre. Et bout le 1er octobre l'année ici. Le pays qui visite ces cliniques là est très satisfait. Et puis, le traitement y a trouvé. Nouvelle Akoyol visite cette culture là. Plus bonne année maintenant, pour te tenir l'opinion de qui vous suivent le traitement au manoir médical de l'Amérique. Oui, il était bien. Il m'a dit que je m'en ai dit avant de prendre le porte de la vie. Il m'a dit que je m'en ai dit que je m'en ai dit est-ce que vous avez besoin de l'inette pour aller loin ou bien pour aller avec ça? Donc, so, en opinion, ça c'était une bonne initiative qui fait pour aider les gens qui sont là? Oui, parce que les gens qui sont là, ils 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 sont là, ou apprécier ça qui fait Oui, je suis et qui m'enchaîne ça. 
OK OK on ah. satisfait avec mon Oui 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 bon bon quelle est ça tu as une idée quand tu comme moi quand quand moi tu pas dire les gars linette moi donc moi qui gars docteur pour 100 dollars pour docteur moi parler avec mon devoir de savoir Comment vous ça Ah, tout le monde. Ah, vous savez, 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 vous tout ça qui a arrivé moi, ça pour qui a arrivé moi, et qui lui met des cas moi, et me désatisfait. Qui quelques conseils vous avez pour les gens qui m'ont checké quelques expériences ça? Oh, il y a ma chance hein, parce que sont malades. N'importe qui ça vient, expérience ça, expérience là, parce que il explique dans mes sacs qui a arrivé moi comment ils ils ont fait, et puis lui met moi si possible la voix les peuples en opinion yo concernant les services hot manoir médical médecin qui est assez ici pour tuer les services santé volontairement la tenue en cérémonie lundi passé pour des matchs finissement service à la côté les officiers et gouvernement et ministère de santé oui merci à ce officier médical là pour grande quantité d'assistance médicale ça là gouvernement de la république coréenne Présenter service les pompiers cette ici et puis à l'homme de 120 000 dollars américains qui sortit un budget de coopération développement international pays coréen. Ambassade de République Ambassade de République Korea Song Monop dit que assistance à la car renforcer avec car renforcer capacité service les pompiers du roi des arts national à cette ici. Samonia depuis coup le 25 septembre un département qui va se concentrer pour affaire de sécurité des hauts pays. Chef officier les pompiers, M. Joseph Joseph, remercie le gouvernement coréen autant pour des contributions contribution à la gouvernement cette ici et le gouvernement de la République coréenne a des relations diplomatiques pour 40 ans à présent. Devant un grand spectacle, côté officiellement ouvert, moi de héritage coréen qui pourrait coup en ville Sophia dimanche passé, et puis un pile d'activités comme la sérénale, visitation pour plusieurs places d'héritage. Et grand spectacle même en place nouveau pour les Riverdales, Old Trafford, officier CDF George Fischalfos explique la signification de nos découvertes souffrières. Vous avez choisi souffrir là, n'est-ce pas? Découvert cette Eh bien, nous toujours quand on parle de la nous pas rester à la commune. Nous tous les noms de nous quand toujours aller au haut cette liste. Si c'est pas place ça, c'est place ça. Si nous quand continuer, Probably dans les prochaines, nous avons découvert l'autre commune. You know, I mean, c'est comme ça, la calle. Nous avons découvert cette ici. Nous avons découvert un um, soupouillé dans les ça. L'autre année, nous avons découvert l'autre commune. C'est comme ça, il va aller. Bien, monsieur, madame, ça c'est côté. Nous avons un bout de nouvelles pour aujourd'hui. Nous avons remercié autant pour vous regarder. Nous avons une invitation pour que je puisse considérer comme ça fait la vie. Nous avons pour cette autre nouvelle à quoi elle. Pour ça, nous avons pour cette autre nouvelle. Merci à Pill Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies with a few showers today becoming increasingly cloudy tomorrow with some scattered showers and a chance of thunderstorms. A tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to bring cloudy conditions with showers and a few thunderstorms over the islands from Thursday continuing into Friday. Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is also moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 6 p.m. The tide for the Four Bay was low at 1.01 p.m. and is high at present. The seas slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.53 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Chanel Novel.